Now, I might be about a month late coming out with this video. I'm filming this before Christmas, but I think I'm probably going to get it up after Christmas, so apologies for my tardiness. Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome to Upside Down Books. Today, as you've seen, we're going to be doing my November book haul, which was quite different to what I was anticipating it would be. I had a wild time buying books in October, and I think I sort of chastened myself and it was a little bit more respectable on the number of books that I bought in November and so this haul isn't actually too crazy. In fact today I actually only have five books to haul so we can keep this short and sweet which is lovely. I have three physical books and two audiobooks to haul um, as per, not really, that's not per normal at all, but I, obviously, anyway, moving on. I was trying quite hard not to buy too many books because I usually slow down my purchasing and receiving everything else in November and then I go on a total book buying ban in, in December because I often receive books for Christmas, so I try not to buy too many other books so that I'm not quite so overwhelmed. One of my favourite things to do for asking for, for books at Christmas time, because we all love receiving them when we all love books, is creating a wish list on the book depository. This isn't sponsored, this is just a really solid piece of advice that I'm going to give you right now, because you can publicly share your wish list on the book depository. They give you a share link, and so I always send that. I have three different wish lists now of X many books, an, enorm an enormous number of books in total. And I have maybe like three different groups of people that I might send them out to, so if they ask what books can I get you, it's still like each of those lists has like one or two hundred books on them. So I'm not going to know what I get, but it means they're definitely getting me something I don't have. Anyway, that's my advice I'm going to give you today because I find that an excellent way to have a spectacular Christmas for the gift receiving side of it. We're going to start today with the books that I got on audiobook. I didn't get any ebooks this month, it was just audiobooks. So with my Audible credit for November, I decided to get Scythe by Neil Schusterman. And I have just started listening to this one and it's so interesting. I think this might be the same narrator who did They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. If not, it's very similar and I really like that narrator. This book is only 10 hours long and I'm super excited to read it because Neil Schusterman is such a popular author who I've never read before. He has so many books. Um, I'm pretty sure he's at least got quite a few books, so I, yeah, I'm just so excited. This one is about when people stop dying. Humanity has progressed so far that they have even conquered death. There's no disease, there's no poverty, there's no nothing. Everything is controlled by the Thunderhead, which is the title of book two, so I'm pretty curious to see what book two is about. This Thunderhead does everything except choose who dies, because people have to die, otherwise population would be a problem. There are ways to genetically reset, so they call it turning a corner when you reach a certain age and you want to say, actually, I want to go back to 25, then I think 25 is the lowest they can bring people down to, or 21 or something. Then they go and they get that done, and even if you die, so there's some people that are called splatters who like jumping off things, basically in a suicidal way and landing on the pavement, they just get put back together again and healed. So you, you can't kill yourself, it just doesn't happen. That's where the sides exist. So these are basically like reapers who choose on a particular algorithm that they have who is going to die. They have a quota of people to glean every year in order to keep the population in control. It's very interesting. It's set in mid-America, so it's American. And it's, yeah, got a, two very interesting lead characters who have some very interesting views on their lives and their current period of time. It's just one of those nice exploratory books into a sort of weird future where things are just a bit bit dystopian. Good read so far, really excited to finish it and see where the whole story goes. The second audiobook that I got is Stephen Fry's Victorian Secrets. Now this is actually sort of like a podcast and I'm really excited about it. I saw this had come up on my recommended and I usually ignore that because I have so many other books to read but I love Stephen Fry so much and I love his books, he's such an intelligent man that I checked it out and this is free on Audible and I don't know if it was just a promotion but I highly recommend going and downloading it. It's, hang on, it's done by episodes rather than anything else. So there are 12 like half an hour to 45 minute episodes that you get to listen to and it'll just be on Victorian life and I can't wait to start this. I am going travelling for a month in January and I'm planning on listening to this on the plane or something like that. Probably not the plane because I do have a particular book coming up that I'm planning on reading on the plane. Point is, I'm really looking forward to reading this one, and yeah, I just I just can't wait. I just, I'm just so excited. So moving on to the physical books that I got, I actually only bought one physical book in November. This has happened several times in 2018 that I have done a really good job of not buying that many books. 
Apart from audiobooks, one of which was free, one of which was on my subscription, I received two other books. I just bought one other book. It's Mutiny on the Bounty by Peter Fitzsimons, which is historical non-fiction? I'm honestly not sure if this is classified as fiction or non-fiction. I've never read any Peter si Fitzsimons before. I kind of assumed that all of his stuff was non-fiction and I've never had the guts to buy one of his books because they're quite chunky. But I do this blog post, which I haven't done all year just about due to a lack of time, on my blog, which is called Past to Paper. And on there I do different topics that I look at that are underrepresented in literature. I feel like underrepresented has too much meaning these days, but I just mean ones that people don't talk about. So I've done stuff on African history, I've done things on the Great Fire of London. There's like no books that are fictionalised on that, you know, just using some fun historical settings and also helping people learn about things they don't know about. point that I'm getting to with that is The Mutiny on the Bounty is literally the next one I have to write when I get some time to do it. And when I saw that Peter Fitzsimons was coming up with a book, I thought, I just have to have it. I really am looking forward to reading this one, and I've set myself the challenge to read this in March of 2019, because if I don't tell myself when I'm going to read it, I'm not going to pick this book up. So as soon as March rolls around, I'm going to be picking up this mammoth of a book, and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy reading it. I've actually had a quick leaf through, and I'm really quite enamoured with his writing style. It's actually really easy to read and friendly and not so you know, dry as you can get in non-fiction, if this is non-fiction. I feel like this shouldn't be that hard to work out if it's... I could just look it up, but I'm not going to. Anyway, the point is, this is a gorgeous book, it's huge. I saw it on sale for like way cheaper than anywhere else was selling it, so I just had to get a copy, guys. So I did. The next book that I received is an uncorrected proof of the ruin of kings, so it looks really ugly. This is what the book is actually going to look like, not all this black stuff. Just go and have a look on Goodreads to see that in all of its glory. But this is an epic fantasy with teeny weeny little font, and it's very floppy, and it sounds like it's going to be incredible. This, the whole concept of this book is what if you weren't the hero? So I was sent this by Pam McMillan, so thank you very much for sending me such an exciting release for 2019. I believe this is coming out in, oh, there you go, it's coming out in February of next year, so I, this is the book I'm going to be reading on the plane, because I think this one might take a little bit of time to sit down and read, because the font is quite small and epic fantasy always requires a little bit more attention. I'm travelling to Europe, so I have, like, a whole day of travelling both ways on planes, so I'm gonna have plenty of time to probably read all of it just then. That's my sneaky plan to get that one read. I just think it sounds really interesting. It has such an interesting plot going for it. The main character is sort of a street urchin, grew up in a brothel, but then gets claimed as a lost member of the royal family, but doesn't really get welcomed in into a life of glamour and stuff. He's more like a political prisoner. He then gets entangled in a plot to kill the emperor. So there's just all sorts of things going on where the good guy is playing the bad guy. So I'm really curious to see it. I think there's gonna be a great read. I haven't read an epic fantasy book for such a long time, so I'm actually really excited to have a new one in my hands. The last book that I have to show you is another uncorrected proof, which I've been meaning to read this December, so when I finish my current read, hopefully I'll have time to pick it up, but we will see, and that is Enchante by, uh, oh, that's a good question, Jita Trelis. I feel like I'm supposed to have an accent with that name, but that's the author. So this has a gorgeous cover, which again, I might put a picture of it to show you, is the girl's face with the French flag colours spread across it, absolutely gorgeous. Um, this came in such a cute parcel. If you watched my reading vlogs for the readathon that I did, I think it was the second last one, this came in a normal package from Pam McMillan. Again, thank you Pam McMillan. And it was then wrapped up in a beautiful little paper with like a little bow on it. So I got to like unwrap it and everything. There's so much publicity going on for this book. The reason that I have this one is I was invited to participate in a global blo blog tour for this one. So there's going to be a release coming out when it's released in on the 21st of February 2019, so I've got heaps of time. So I'm planning to have my review up there and then heaps of other people around the world are also going to be reading and reviewing it and maybe doing some author interviews and all sorts of things. Probably some giveaways will happen as well, so keep your eyes out for that event. So this is set during the French Revolution, so 1789, and it follows the main girl whose parents are killed by the smallpox and she's left to look after her brother and sister. Brother and sister. So she has some magic, which she is like using to try and get by and survive 
in a world without really anyone supporting her. Her brother then disappears and this sparks Camille, the main character, her, her goal into getting into the court of King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. So she uses her magic to turn herself, transform herself into a baroness. And not into any baroness actually, Baroness de la Fontaine, which is actually an historical figure which I'm pretty sure came up in Outlander. I'm pretty sure that's an actual historical figure. So this is an historical fiction retelling which I'm thrilled about. The whole hook, line and sink with this one is that while she's in the court leading this double life to try and figure out what's happened to her brother and to get some money, she realises that she's not the only one leading a double life. So I'm really hoping that means that we're going to find out that Marie Antoinette is not who she thinks she is, but I think this is going to be a great little tale. I love books that are set and do retellings of the French Revolution. There's just so much context there to talk about, so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up soon. So those were the five books that I got in November. Well done me for not going overboard. I'm very much so looking Looking forward to doing my haul in December because I already have a few other exciting new releases I've been sent for review. There are some exciting things coming out next year guys so make sure you're getting ready to buy some new books because there's just so much good stuff coming out right now and I'm very curious to see what books I might receive at Christmas time. So I will leave this video here and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!